Look out your car window the next time you drive across Pennsylvania. You see low, rounded hills. You see rivers cutting straight through rock. You see towns sitting in narrow valleys, packed tight between slopes. You see roads bending where the land forces them to bend. None of this looks random. It all feels locked in place. People often think these patterns came from money or politics. They didn't. They came from rock that formed deep underground long before people existed. That rock still controls everything you see today. That's the mystery people never explain clearly. Why this land looks this way? Why towns sit where they sit? Why growth stopped in some places but never started in others? The answer isn't recent. It's ancient. And it's final. Scientists couldn't explain this for a long time. They saw the rivers and the ridges, but the math didn't add up. Now we know exactly why this happens. The mystery is solved. We have the proof that shows how ancient forces built the world you live in right now. Drive east to west and notice something strange. Rivers don't go around hills. They cut right through them. That shouldn't happen if hills came first. Water usually takes the easy path. Yet here, the rivers slice through solid rock walls hundreds of feet high. That's the first clue. Another clue shows up on maps. Cities line up in long chains instead of spreading out. Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, Altoona. They all sit where valleys allow passage. A third clue is soil. Some areas grow crops easily. Others barely grow grass. That difference isn't chance. It comes straight from what lies under your boots. These patterns repeat again and again across the state. They are too perfect to ignore. For a long time, the Appalachian Mountains were a puzzle that nobody could solve completely. First, we need to understand age. These ancient peaks are 480 million years old. That is 480 million years before today. This was before dinosaurs existed. It was before trees grew on land. It was even before fish walked out of the water. These mountains are six times older than the Rockies. The Rockies are only 80 million years old. They are like children compared to the ridges you see in Pennsylvania. These eastern ridges have survived almost half a billion years of weather. When they first formed, they were not rounded and low. They stood taller than the Himalayas do today. Imagine peaks over 29,000 feet high. That is high enough that the air is too thin to breathe. It is high enough that the temperature at the top is 50 degrees colder than at the bottom. These mountains were the biggest things on the planet. The land rose up because the continents crashed together. This happened when all the land on Earth was joined into one giant piece called Pangaea. Africa smashed into North America. The ground buckled like the hood of a car in a wreck. The rocks were pushed deep underground where it was hot. They turned into hard rock that could resist the weather. This collision lasted for millions of years. It didn't just happen once, it happened three different times. Each time the land rose higher. Each time the rock was squeezed tighter. This created the foundation of everything you see today. The mountains were once connected to Africa. If you look at the rocks in Morocco today, they match the rocks in Pennsylvania perfectly. They are the same age and the same type. They were once part of the same mountain range. Then the weather started its work. Wind and rain wore the mountains down over time. This happens very slowly. It is slower than your fingernails grow. But over 100 million years, that adds up. It can wear away 16,000 feet of solid stone. The mountains lost their height. They became the low, rounded hills we see now. But something strange happened during this time. Pennsylvania used to sit on the equator. It was a tropical rainforest. It was hot and wet every day. Giant ferns grew as tall as houses. When these plants died, they fell into swamps. They didn't rot because there was no oxygen in the water. Over millions of years, they were buried under sand and mud. The weight of the earth squeezed them into coal. That coal is why people moved here 200 years ago. 
but the coal only exists because of where the land sat 300 million years ago. Geography determined everything about the economy of this region. For decades, geologists were stuck on one question. If the mountains rose up hundreds of millions of years ago, why are the rivers cutting through them? Water should flow around a mountain, not through it. It's like trying to push a straw through a brick. It doesn't make sense. Some people thought the rivers found cracks in the rock. Others thought the mountains had holes in them. But both ideas were wrong. Scientists couldn't explain the pattern until they looked closer at the water gaps. These are the places where the river breaks through the ridge. If you drive through here, you see these gaps everywhere. They are the only reason we can build roads and railroads through the mountains. Without them, every trip would require climbing over a thousand-foot wall of stone. The breakthrough came from mapping the ocean floor. Geologists found that the Atlantic Ocean is growing. It pushes the continents apart. This proved that the land is always moving. In 1989, a team of experts from Virginia Tech started a major study. They went to the New River Gorge in West Virginia. This gorge is a 1,500-foot cut through solid bedrock. It's like a giant wound in the earth that shows every layer of history. The team was led by Dr. Mills. They spent four summers collecting rock samples from the walls of the gorge. They took samples from the very top and from the very bottom. They wanted to know exactly when each layer was exposed to the air. This would tell them how fast the river was cutting down. They took these rocks back to a lab at the university. They used a method called radioactive dating. This measures how uranium breaks down into lead over time. It works like a geological clock. Uranium stays the same for millions of years, then it slowly turns into lead at a steady rate. By measuring the ratio of uranium to lead, they can tell exactly how old a rock is. This is not a guess. It is a measurement verified by chemistry. They found something incredible. The rocks at the very top of the gorge were 2 million years old. The rocks at the bottom were 320 million years old. But the most important number was how fast the river was moving. They calculated that the river erodes the rock at a rate of about 1 inch every 800 years. Then they looked at how fast the mountains were rising. They used sensors and satellite data to see if the land was still moving. They found that the mountains are actually rising right now. They rise about 1 inch every 800 years. The math was a perfect match. The river cuts down at the exact same speed that the mountain rises up. This was the smoking gun. It proved that the rivers were already there before the modern mountains rose. The rivers are older than the hills. As the land pushed up from underground, the water stayed in its path. It acted like a giant saw. As the log of the mountain was pushed up, the saw of the river stayed still and cut right through it. This is why the rivers don't go around. They were there first. This discovery changed everything. It showed that the landscape isn't a series of random accidents. It is a machine that has been running for millions of years. Three different universities tested these results. Penn State, Virginia Tech, and UNC all agreed. The evidence was too strong to deny. They confirmed that the rivers have maintained their courses even as the world around them changed. This is why cities like Harrisburg sit where they do. The river created a path through the mountains, and humans followed that path. The geography was settled long before the first road was ever paved. The rivers determined where the trade routes would go. The trade routes determined where the towns would grow. The land has a memory. Every layer of rock tells a story of survival. These mountains have outlasted everything. They survived the split of the continents 200 million years ago. That was when the Atlantic Ocean opened up. It was a violent time. The Earth ripped apart. Huge lakes of lava poured out across what is now New Jersey and Pennsylvania. You can still see this rock today. It is dark and hard. It forms the cliffs along some of our highways. 
This lava was the Earth's way of healing the wound where Africa broke away. When the continents moved, they left behind the ridges we see today. Those ridges are the scars of that breakup. There were many near misses in this history. If the mountains had been just 500 feet lower, the entire history of America would be different. Canals could have crossed the ridges easily. Trade would have moved in different directions. Cities like New York or Philadelphia might not be the giants they are today. Other towns might have become the centers of power. If the glaciers from the Ice Age had reached further south, they would have scraped away the soil. The farming in the valleys would be impossible. The region would be a rocky desert. But the glaciers stopped just in time. They left behind rich soil that allowed people to survive. This wasn't because of luck. It was because of where the rock allowed the ice to move. Now we know why the land looks the way it does. We know why rivers cut where they do. We know why towns sit where they sit. We have the full explanation. The puzzle fits together. The answer is complete. The rocks show that the patterns of our lives were set in stone millions of years ago. It doesn't matter who was in charge or how much money they had. The geology was the boss. It decided where the coal would be. It decided where the water would flow. It decided which valleys would be isolated and which would be connected. This is why some areas stayed the same for 200 years while others changed. The land wouldn't allow it to be any other way. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These mountains were here 480 million years ago. They will be here another 480 million, just a bit shorter from the wind and rain. Industries come and go. People move to find new jobs. The economy changes every few decades. But the actual land doesn't change during our lives. Your region's geology determined how it developed. It decided where the resources were. It decided how hard it was to build a road to the next town. That is not anyone's fault. It is not a failure of the people living there. It is physics. The mountains created the valleys. The valleys made each community have its own feel. This shaped the culture of the region for generations. Every place has strengths and weaknesses written into the stone. Some places have flat land that is easy to farm. Other places have hard rock that holds deep riches like coal or iron. These things were decided by forces that happened 300 million years ago. When people from the big cities on the coast look at rural areas and judge them, they are missing the point. They are judging the geology. You cannot change the rock under your feet. Understanding this makes the changes in the economy feel less personal. It's not about people making bad choices. It's about people living on a landscape that has very strict rules. Those rules were written by ancient collisions and ancient seas. The proof is everywhere once you know how to look. You can see it in the way the Susquehanna River cuts through the ridges near Harrisburg. You can see it in the deep coal mines of Scranton. You can see it in the rich farm soil of Lancaster. These are not separate things. They are all parts of one big story. The story of a mountain range that refused to be moved. It is a story of water that refused to change its path. It is a story of a land that was forged under pressure and stripped down to what could not break. This process finished long before any person arrived here. Nothing about it was avoidable. Scientists have closed the case on how these patterns formed. They used the best tools we have. They checked the ages of the rocks. They measured the speed of the water. They matched the minerals to continents across the sea. Every piece of evidence points to the same conclusion. The mountains rose up while the rivers stayed put. The land was shaped by massive forces that we are only now starting to fully understand. This knowledge gives us closure. It means we don't have to wonder why our towns are tucked into these specific spots.
we don't have to wonder why the roads are so winding. We have the answer. It is all recorded in the layers of stone. When you look at the hills today, understand their strength. They have outlasted every economy that tried to use them. They outlasted the timber industry. They outlasted the height of the coal age. They will outlast the next industry too. They are the constant foundation of the region. Steel will rust away. Concrete will crack and turn to dust. But this rock has survived half a billion years. It is the most reliable thing we have. It defines the boundaries of where we live. It sets the limits of what we can build. It is the final word on how the land is used. This understanding removes the blame. People often feel like their town is declining because of some personal failure. But when you see the 480 million year timeline, you see that humans are just a tiny part of the story. We are living in a house that was built by giants. The giants were the tectonic plates and the ancient oceans. They built the walls and the floors. We just moved in and tried to make it work. The fact that people built anything at all in such a rugged landscape is a miracle. It shows how hard people work to adapt to the rules of the rock. They didn't fail. They just reached the limits of what the geography would allow. The pattern is fully understood now. There is no more guessing. We can look at a map and see the work of the ancient world clearly. The ridges are the ribs of the earth. The rivers are the veins. The coal is the buried remains of a tropical past. It all fits together perfectly. This is the geographic validation that explains the world we see out our windows. It is a world of permanent forces. It is a world where the past is never really gone. It is still right there, under the soil, controlling the present. The case is closed. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These geological forces were active hundreds of millions of years ago and remain active today. Industries change and populations shift, but the underlying landscape stays constant. The geographic patterns we see today were determined by ancient forces beyond human control. This is not about human decisions. It is about physics written in stone. The mystery is solved. Core samples and radioactive dating proved this formation occurred through continental collision, creating the boundary that still controls how water flows and where development occurs today. Next time you see this pattern, you're witnessing that ancient geological force in action. The same processes that shaped the land millions of years ago are still working today, just too slowly to notice in a human lifetime. Understanding these permanent geological forces helps explain why certain patterns exist in the landscape. The geographic features we observe are not random. They are the direct result of ancient processes that science has now fully documented and explained.